Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I'm going to talk about the Hyperloop. Uh, this is one of Elon Musk's projects and uh, anyone who's been following the uh, the technology uh, news for the past decade or so has a pretty good uh, feel that uh, pretty much everything Mr. Musk touches turns into platinum or something like that. I don't think Hyperloop will be one of those things. Others have gone through the math and debunked it uh, thoroughly. But the gist of the problems with Hyperloop are that it needs a massive vacuum chamber. And if you puncture the containment of a vacuum chamber, it tends to collapse catastrophically. And even if it doesn't, the inrushing air uh, will, will be a catastrophic thing for the uh, hurtling uh, shuttles inside the system to run into. Uh, because you'll have a sudden increase in pressure. It might as well be a wall. Uh, so the failure mode, like if there's a leak in any part of the system, the whole system fails. And, and that, that's something that obviously needs a solution. And that's leaving aside the fact that if you build the Hyperloop on the scale they're talking about, they need a 300-mile-long vacuum chamber, and that is highly unlikely to happen. Uh, now, if they can make that happen, great, but it also, but that has some issues as well. Uh, and that is all materials that we know of expand and contract due to ambient temperature and the, or the temperature of the material. So you've got thermal expansion you have to deal with. And with a vacuum chamber, you can't just put up typical expansion joints and, and have it work because those won't be airtight. You'd need something that's airtight and that will stay airtight and stand up to a lot of mechanical action as the uh, sections expand and contract. And that is going to be a real problem. Also, the length of a 300-mile vacuum tube is going to change very substantially over the course of a day, even with normal day-night temperature variations. So you need some way to avoid this thermal expansion problem. And that, so that, that's two big issues they've got already. And, and then you've got the issue of building a, the vacuum chamber so it doesn't, uh, so, well, you, so you can actually build it. Uh, that's a problem as well. Uh, and then you've got the issue of getting into the vacuum and out of it at either end. Uh, that's going to require some sort of airlock, obviously. So that's going to increase travel time. And they haven't taken that into account in any of their sales material. Uh, or I guess their uh, PR material. The, uh, and then, of course, you're going to have to have airline-level security before boarding. Um, whether you really need that or not, it's going to be there. So that's going to add half an hour or an hour to every trip. Uh, so by the time you're done, uh, the end result is, is probably not much faster than going to an airport and getting on a plane. Because you still have to go to the terminal. You still have to get on the Hyperloop. You have to you know, get off and, and so on. Uh, so, it's probably not going to be substantially faster. Now, you could uh, probably, for the same price, build an, a, a, a classic high-speed rail line, uh, which we do know how to build and can build over hundreds of miles, and end up with a reasonable uh, 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 transit time, uh, that uh, is comparable to at least airlines and uh, has much less catastrophic failure modes. Uh, that is, a train crashing at San Francisco doesn't automatically destroy a train leaving Los Angeles. Uh, so there, the system is more resilient. Now, obviously, a train crashing at full speed is going to be dangerous. And there's, uh, you have a relatively low probability of surviving some, a crash like that if the train stops suddenly when it's going 200 or 300 miles an hour. So, uh, realistically, probably a high-speed rail line is, is going to be more cost-effective than trying to build the Hyperloop. Now... The Hyperloop itself, if they do manage to pull off the technology to make it work, well, that will be seriously impressive, and it'll be worth whatever accolades they get if they do pull it off. Uh, 
Even if they pull it off on a much smaller scale, it'll still be worth accolades because it will be a seriously impressive engineering and potentially scientific achievement. Uh, so, I, you know, I am pulling for them to succeed in at least building a prototype that works. Because realistically, it should be possible to build something that works. Whether it works well or that it, whether, whether it's practical or not, that's the question. And most commenters that understand the uh, science and so on involved don't believe it will be practical. And I do fall in that camp. I don't believe it'll be practical if they ever do make it happen. Now, uh, I have another take on the whole Hyperloop operation. I'm not sure that Mr. Musk actually thinks the Hyperloop itself is going to happen. I think he's, he's bankrolled this as a pie-in-the-sky project, that he started it up as a pie-in-the-sky project, as a, a goal, maybe, to work toward. But I think he's hoping to get something else out of the Hyperloop, rather, other than a fully functional, actual Hyperloop. Now, uh, obviously, the Hyperloop uh, people are uh, going full bore uh, as if the Hyperloop is the goal, and that's probably what they believe it to be. They, they probably honestly believe that they can achieve the Hyperloop, at least somebody there probably does, and they've structured their PR and everything around that uh, that notion. And since that is their obvious stated goal, that's somewhat appropriate for their operation to do. Now, I think uh, that uh, Mr. Musk uh, it would be probably just as happy if the engineering and development work, the R&D that they have to do to build a Hyperloop results in something marketable that can offset the ongoing costs that they've incurred. And he'd be even more happy if they come up with a breakthrough that helps one of his other concerns like SpaceX or Tesla. Uh, and I think the Hyperloop as a goal is actually a really good motivator for uh, research down the line towards some of these magical materials that we would need to do some of these fancy science fiction things that people would love to have happen. Things like a space elevator. Uh, so maybe Hyperloop will point some research in the right direction to achieve uh, some breakthrough in material science or uh, propulsion science or or maybe they'll just be come up with better ways to build ginormous vacuum chambers, which would be worth something as well. So uh, it may be that even if Hyperloop never happens, the Hyperloop company itself may end up turning out to be profitable in the long run. Uh, and that would be, that would be uh, impressive all on its own, and that would be a good end result. Um, but... Regardless of that, if that is what he really uh, expects out of it, uh, the Hyperloop people need to be more honest about uh, what is likely possible. Now, I think it's possible that they might be a little bit diluted, and that's entirely reasonable. But they need to be a little more realistic about what's really possible, uh, especially with current technology. Now, they've obviously been doing work, and they've had their competitions, and they've got test tracks and all of that stuff, and they're, they're working on things, and, and maybe they'll, they'll get something that works, and I'm pulling for them. You know, I really want them to manage to build something that resembles a real Hyperloop, uh, just because uh, it would mean that something cool has been done, and they will have learned something in the process, and the whole world will have learned something in the process. But I also hope that if they do fail to achieve it, that they're honest with what they have attempted to do to achieve it, and that they do cut their losses if they realize that they can't do it, rather than stringing along investors and so on for a decade or two while they, uh, p they fiddle around. So uh, it's, it's really a question, uh, maybe, maybe what we need 
is for uh, Musk and Hyperloop to come out and say, yeah, we don't know that this is actually possible, and we, we think it might be, and we're trying to figure out how. Uh, and be fully upfront about that. Uh, instead of just sticking with these whiz-bang computer-generated graphic presentations with the really, really uh, out-there claims in them. Uh, now, there's another possibility with the whole Hyperloop thing. Uh, beyond just the maybe Musk is hoping that they have a scientific breakthrough that helps one of his other concerns or is standalone useful on its own. It might be an elaborate prank in response to some of these hoaxes out there that uh, people have fallen for hook, line, and sinker. Like solar, uh, how, how is it, uh, Nathan Fillion put it, solar freaking roadways. Yeah. Um, it, maybe he's, maybe it's an elaborate prank to demonstrate that some level of skepticism needs to return to, to the general public and the celebrities and, and the news and so on. And, and maybe it's just an elaborate multi-million dollar prank. But you know what? I really don't think it is. I think either he really believes in Hyperloop and that it, he believes that it will happen, or he's just hoping for it to spur some R&D that is useful on its own. Either way, I don't think that, uh, that Musk himself is attempting to perpetrate any kind of a fraud. Uh, and I don't think the Hyperloop people necessarily are either. Uh, I, I think that the people trying to build the Hyperloop are genuinely trying to build the Hyperloop. Uh, but it will be interesting to see what comes of it. And it should be clear in a decade or so uh, if they're, they have any chance of achieving their goal. Probably be clear a lot sooner. But... Uh, you know, if a decade from now they're no f further toward their goal than they are today, then we can be reasonably certain that they're probably not going to achieve it. While in the meantime, Tesla will continue building batteries in its gigafactory and selling power systems and, and building uh, uh, electric cars and generally uh, uh, being a going concern, and SpaceX will continue muddling along, building its space vehicles and so on. Uh, so, uh, you know, even if Hyperloop turns out to be an elaborate hoax or what have you, at least something good has come out of the whole Elon Musk throwing his money around uh, situation. So, uh, really, uh, I'm, I'm kind of pulling for the Hyperloop people to pull that rabbit out of their hat and, and actually deliver on their promise. Uh, if they manage it, I'll be seriously impressed. Uh, but uh, let's be realistic, they probably won't. Uh, and I don't think anybody will ever be getting onto a Hyperloop in San Francisco and half an hour later getting off in Los Angeles. I really don't think that's going to happen. So let's let's be realistic in our expectations. and and say, hey, if they pull it off, brilliant. But if they don't, okay, let's just chalk that up to, yeah, people got a little bit over-enthusiastic over something that didn't really pass a smell test. Anyway, that's probably enough on that. that that's, that's all I'm going to say about the Hyperloop thing uh, for now. Uh, so, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications with that bell icon thing. And if you like the video, or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike, whichever you see fit. It's not going to hurt my feelings one way or the other. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.